Yo guys, JC here. I was actually going to start recording, but then like some some kids, you know, started making noise outside, so I had to go close the window. Uh, in Japan, we have a word for that. We say gaki. And usually it's said with a bit of kind of aggression uh, because it means brats, basically. Yeah. All right. Uh, today's video is actually very important, so I hope you watch it to the end because today I'm going to talk about scams. Now, the problem is, like these days, like I said in my last video yesterday, we really live in the era of scamming, okay? There are scams everywhere. There, because there's like almost 8 billion people on the planet. And, you know, not everybody has the opportunity to get an education or, I don't know, like just get a, like a regular job. So, you know... Some people resort to scams, and that's very unfortunate, but that's also kind of the the result of poor planning, if you really think about it, uh, because we have, like, so many people, but we don't have enough jobs for, for them. I mean, also, I always hear some, some things like, okay, some countries always looking for doctors, for nurses, and I've been hearing that for, like, 30, 40 years. It's like what's the problem? Like, go and get them then. Like, but you still keep begging and, uh, you know, then it goes into the requirements are too high or the education is is not high enough. So they need maybe five, ten years to, like, properly get up to speed or something, which is, I understand that in the health sector. You don't want some people who are underqualified. However, in my experience with doctors, even in, like, you know, kind of, developed countries as we say i don't really like that term because it's so like it's such discrimination really uh but okay let's just say for, for the sake of argument here even in developed countries i'm i'm often very disappointed with doctors it's like they they can fix kind of like the easy problems you have some kind of sore throat or you have a fever or you know you have like a, a tiny like cut on your hand and they will put like a patch on it or something. They, they can do that. Unfortunately, when it comes to the more complicated things, they just like look at you like deer uh, in the headlight, you know? It's it's really like that. I mean, I, I'm sick, okay? I have a, a very strange sickness. Um, we tried to find kind of uh, similar situations, but we're unable to do that right now. Uh, that's not even my job because I'm just a patient, you see. Um, but the doctors, they they don't know what's going on. We did all the tests. Everything's good. But clearly something is going on and, and they don't know what it is, right? So, yeah. Uh, medical field, very disappointing in my experience. Not just now, but also in the past. But anyway, today we're talking about scams. And... Uh, I hope you watch to the end of the video because it's very important, especially if you're a very old person. Um, okay, I kind of doubt that very old people watch my videos, to be honest. But if you do, just pay attention here because this is very, very important. Uh, there, there are people who, you know, give out their entire life savings to scammers. And you're... The, the chances of you getting that money back later is really, really small. I, I think it's probably impossible. You can kiss that goodbye. So uh, pay attention to this video. I'm going to talk about all the different type of scams. And also, I'm going to give you some advice, um, you know, how to prevent that shit from happening. And also, like, if you're kind of young, if you're a younger person, and if you just want to have some fun, uh, I can give you, again, some hints how to deal with scammers. Uh, usually in that case, like if you're not a tech person, you can't, you don't want to like hack them back or something. That's fine. I understand. It's a bit complicated. Uh, but one of the kind of best things then to do is probably waste their time uh, just because they will always go on some kind of story, you know, like da 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 da, like my, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, Go on a story yourself, invent some story on the spot, or maybe think about it beforehand, and just take them on this journey. Like, even, even fake your voice, pretend like you're very old, you don't understand what you're doing. Uh, when if, if they go into tech support, uh, just like keep bombarding them with questions. It's like if they say, uh, click on download button, you can say, uh, 
where is it? Where is it at? Something like that. And that will waste their time. And while they're wasting time on you, they can't scam someone else, okay? Someone else might be calling in that number at the same time, and it's busy. The line is busy. So that's good. They will not get scammed at that time at least, all right? So that's it. Let's look at the different type of scams first, and then I will uh, jump back and talk about some more. So we're going to start with this page here. Okay. Where is it? Here it is. Okay. So this one comes from the uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So that's a pretty good source. Unfortunately, uh, this one is a bit outdated in my experience. Uh, they have like charity scams. And this is, you know, this is an obvious one. Every time there is some kind of disaster, uh, the affected area, region, uh, local authorities like organize some charities. But the problem is like you don't know if it's legit or not. So be very, very careful who you give to because, yeah, uh, there's a lot of scams there. Uh, debt collection scams. So this is something, this actually sounds like you, you get an email saying it's like Amazon, right? And uh, you bought some kind of item. Let's say like you bought an iPhone, the latest iPhone or something for like $1,200. $1, and of course, you didn't do that. You didn't buy anything. Uh, so they will give you a number to call. And uh, yeah. Eventually, this always leads to some kind of gift cards. Like you have to send them gift cards for some reason, and then they'll, they'll give you your money back. It already sounds like total bullshit because it is. But believe me, some old people will fall for this. Because again, this is mostly designed for the older audience. Like they, they're not uh, tech savvy. Um, they don't really understand any of what's going on. Maybe they have Alzheimer's or other mental disease. So their mental capacity is very limited already. And that's what the scammers are taking advantage of. So be very, very careful. Uh, debt settlement and death relief scams. Okay, that's kind of the same thing. This one, I don't even know what that is. FDIC logo misuse. I, I'm not sure. Some kind of banking scam, maybe. Okay, uh, foreclosure relief or mortgage loan. So again, if yeah, this could be like if you have some kind of property and then you will get some emails trying to, I don't know, like reorganize your mortgage plan. Uh, you, you need to check the source of the email. Like where is it really coming from? Uh, make sure you check where it's coming from. Uh, grandparent scams. So this like, actually this one, the only time I really saw that was actually kind of in person. This is more an in-person scam, but it could be on the phone, I guess. Yeah, sure. Why not? But in person, this could be actually more dangerous because what happens is, I don't know, like you, you meet some kind of young person uh, on the street, you know, and they will say, oh, like you have to come immediately. Like your, your grandmother is like dying or something. You need to come immediately. And then you follow them and you know, they will lead you to some kind of alley with some other thugs. And, you know, in, in the best case scenario, you'll probably get robbed. In the worst case scenario, you'll get beaten up. And uh, yeah, like, just be careful of that one. Uh, imposter scams. So this one is actually really popular these days. And again, this is kind of companies or, I mean, scammers who are posing for legit companies. For example, they will pretend that they're Microsoft or they will pretend that they're Amazon or whatever. Uh, but be careful, like again, check, check the source of the email because sometimes it's very, very clever uh, when you check like the, uh, Amaz like the email address, right? Usually it's amazon.com, but when you look at the scammer's email, maybe they will spell Amazon but instead of O, it's like a zero, but it's really hard to tell the difference, especially if you're in a rush. Uh, it just looks all the same to you. And especially if it's all in capital letters, then it's even harder to spot, right? But be very, very careful uh, about the sources of, of the emails. Uh, mail fraud, okay, I'm not really sure what that is. 
uh, money mule scams. So again, this is kind of related to the, you know, kind of a gift card thing. Um, yeah, th this is just scammers moving money around, using people to move money around. Don't fall for that. Just, yeah, don't, don't deal with any kind of money that doesn't belong to you. That would be my advice. Money transfer or mobile payment service fraud. Okay, I think that's kind of the same as the mortgage thing. Mortgage again. Uh, lottery, again, same thing with the lottery. Make sure that it's a legit address because they will say anything. And finally, romance scams. I will talk about this one a bit later in the video. Uh, this is a bit, this one is kind of new to me. I know it's not new in general, but for me, it was kind of new. So just be careful. And I will talk about this one a little bit later, so stay tuned. But uh, for me, honestly, most of these are a little bit old now. And um, yeah, I mean, there's just like more recent ones you have to be aware of. So let's look at those. The next one we're going to look at is this one. So I just don't care about the picture. I'm just going to use some, some of this information from this picture. So uh, fake shopping websites. Well, this one usually happens when you sometimes mistype uh, a, a website. For example, I don't know, like we always do that. Sometimes you type Facebook, but maybe you forget the, the first A. Well, I mean, the only A. And then it goes to like facebook.com. And it's gonna, it might look legit. It might look identical to Facebook, but it's not Facebook. And, you know, once you start to try to log in, uh, they have some key loggers basically. And yeah, they're going to get your Facebook information from that. And then they're, they're going to use that to get into your real Facebook account. Okay. So be very careful with that. And it's the same with shopping websites. Uh, I once almost fell for a fake uh, eBay thing. The guy sent me this page, right? And it looked absolutely like eBay, everything. Uh, but of course it's not eBay. So be very careful. Uh, catfishing. I will come back to this one because this one is very popular these days, but I, I will come back to this a little bit later. Uh, lottery scams we talked about already. Nigerian prince. Honestly, like the Nigerian prince is ancient. I mean, this is like the start of the internet. Uh, I really doubt that these days it's very popular, but the way it works is very simple. You're going to get an email saying that some kind of your distant relative died and, you know, they they have a huge inheritance. Apparently, like, you're the only one who can inherit it. So they need your bank account details. It's a bank account scam, basically. Don't don't fall for that. Of course, it's fake as shit. This one is, is one of the fakest ever. Uh, job offer scams. Now, for me, this one was a bit new. But I know people who, who mentioned this one. So what happens is that, yeah, uh, there are some assholes on the internet and they post basically fake job adverts. And they get your information. They, they will get your, you know, passport information, ID card, whatever. And, you know, they will use that against you later or somehow. I'm not sure how because I'm not part of that scamming business. You see, uh, I can only say, I can only kind of, like guess what, what they can do with it. Uh, but yeah, of course there is no job in this case. Y they just want your information and probably your, your bank info as well. I would sp suspect, uh, fake news. Okay. I'm not really sure why that's here, uh, because it's not, well, I mean, yeah, it is kind of a scam obviously, but I mean, if you, I don't know if I believe some fake news, it doesn't necessarily imply that I'm giving someone money though, or I'm giving someone my passport information or anything like that. So this one, a little bit dodgy, let's say. Uh, free VPN and antivirus. Well, again, this just goes back to kind of the job scams. This is just a, you know, a software scam. Uh, there is no software actually. They, they just want your, I don't know, PayPal money or whatever. Uh, work from home scam. I think this one is the same as four and the uh, fake travel companies. This one would be probably like, like the number six, I would say the analog. So again, yeah, when you book a, 
you know, when you book something, probably best to go to an actual travel agency or use some, you know, very well known, um, like booking, like hotels.com or booking.com, maybe uh, Expedia. I don't know. There's a few of them. So you have to do your research, but be careful because there's a lot of scams as well. Okay. All right. So now we're done with this and I'm, I'm back. Hello. Uh, I hope you're paying attention so far because there's a lot of stuff here that will really help you to, you know, identify uh, what's going on. So now I'm going to talk about the catfishing, because that one uh, is, is very like actual for me. So what happens with catfishing is basically like if you use a smartphone and these days most people do, let's be honest there, even a flip phone, I think, has sometimes access to, to apps, right? So yeah, what happens is like I use iPhone, but Android is the same. And what happens is you have your app store or your play store on the Android. And if you're, let's say, okay, like I'm not, you know, single myself, but I am looking for like friends, let's say. And, but there are people who are single and then they are looking for friends or more that basically I just want to make that distinction. Okay. Uh, all right. So what happens is you go get some apps. Uh, this can be like Tinder or I don't know, okay, Cupid. What what else is there? Because I do have some of them. You see, uh, Bumble actually, yeah, Bumble is another one. There is another one. I forgot the the name of it, but it was it was not very good. That's why I removed it. Yeah, Bumble, uh, Boo, and uh, yeah. Anyway, you get the idea. There are a few apps out there, basically like meeting apps or. Even you can call them dating apps. But Bumble actually is a bit different because Bumble has a, a two categories where you can look for uh, purely friends and also business contacts. So like, yeah, if you're looking for somebody to work for or work with, then it's it's pretty good. But for me, it just, it, it doesn't, never really worked so far. I don't know, like it's, it's hard to, it's hard to connect for me, it's hard to connect with other people. So yeah, anyway, that's not the point. The point is you get these apps, right? You you start looking for people and sometimes, you know, uh, you'll find someone and you start chatting and everything's is good, everything's fine. But be careful because sometimes this can be just part of the of the trick. Yeah, they want to make you feel comfortable and at ease. Uh, they will find some kind of, I don't know, they, they will find something to, to connect to you as much as possible. So you really start to trust them and believe them. But actually, it's a scam. So there are a few ways to deal with this catfishing. And uh, one way I will show you. Okay, so what you do is obviously, hopefully, I mean, if the profile has no picture, I'm not even sure what you're liking then in the first place. Already kind of a red flag there. But let's say the profile is, you know, what I call it like a normal profile. So it has photos. Uh, what you do is you, you either save the photos if that's possible. If it's not possible directly, uh, take a screenshot. So make sure like all the crap is gone. Like sometimes. Okay. So if you use the line app to communicate, because I know some people use WhatsApp or other apps, but if you use line, uh, one profile may look like this. Now this particular profile is actually a scammer. So be careful. If you like see that one, it's 100% a scam. Don't fall for it. Uh, just report it or whatever. Like, just yeah, uh, you can see here that actually the kind of profile photo and the background photo already doesn't look like the same person. So already that's a red flag right there. But you know, some people, especially the kind of desperate guys, they will fall for this. And usually it's some kind of money scam, like a Forex or something like that. They will, they want your money. Look, that's why it's a scam. They, they want your money one way or another. 
So what you do here in that case is that if you click on the background picture, okay, so I click on it and now all the crap is gone, okay? Like, uh, I mean, the profile picture is gone, the time, whatever. And then you take a screenshot. So if you don't know how to do that, uh, please Google that. Uh, I don't even know about Android. So please find out how you can take a screenshot on the iPhone or Android, take a screenshot. And okay, I'm gonna use like now a different picture to illustrate my point, okay? Because this one, I didn't really check, but let's use another picture. So what I'll do here is you go to Google Images. So yeah, you go to Google, uh, you actually, you can use it from here, but you can also click here and then you just get all the clutter out of the screen. And there's a, there's an option here, search by image. So click on that. And it's going to ask you to upload a file, uh, drag an image here or upload a file. Okay, so just give me a moment, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to start with this one first. So this one goes first. Okay, so this is a picture that I saved from a potential scam. I'm not sure exactly if you can see that one or not. So once you upload it, it will com compare it to other visual matches on uh, Google, okay? So already here, you can see that the costume itself, it looks very similar to, to some of these, right? Uh, the location, maybe not yet. Um, but this will give you some a rough idea. But what you can do is you can click here, find image source. So you click on that. And now uh, it will show you actually like the source of that image. So I'm sorry, this these are kind of links, which I'm not sure what exactly they lead to. Okay, so if I find something inappropriate, I apologize. Uh, but let, let's click a few of them. Uh, you can see like a lot of them come from TikTok. Uh, TikTok again, TikTok, TikTok travel green screen. Um, yeah. So again, this is kind of the picture that I saved. Okay. Uh, again, if you're kind of like a, you know, desperate type of guy, you look at this and you're like, oh, you know, pretty girl. Uh, maybe I have some, some chance or something, but it's not. It's not like that. So this one is from Facebook. And you can see that the the photo is the same. I'm gonna just click back here. You can even look at the text here on the banner. It's exactly the same text, but this is actually a video and it's a completely different face. Th this is probably the original I would expect, or maybe it's not, I don't know. But you can see like the start of it and it's a completely different woman, right? Uh, this one, okay, I'm not sure what that is. Um, let's have a look here. So again, different, I'm sorry, but this is a different person. It's a different face. Okay, I'll, I'll show you one more thing. So if you actually scroll down here all the way, uh, it's going to give you some kind of, I don't know what that is. It's some kind of shop website and maybe it's, I guess it's, this is Vietnam, but I'm not exactly sure. And, and if you actually go to this link, uh, so this is the link you, okay, just one moment. All right. This is the link that you reach if you click that website. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is Vietnamese because here it says Hanoi. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, this is some kind of book, I guess. Uh, and in the comments, you'll find this person. So the, of course, the name already is extremely suspicious, but if you click on it and this is that same location, it's exactly the same location, but again, the face looks different, even though it's tiny here, I can see the face is completely different. The name is Vietnamese. So I'm just going to assume that whoever this is, uh, you know, just used her face and pasted it on, on those people and is trying to say, oh, that's me. By the way, this person told me she's a model, part-time model, and also like a, like a writer, right? So again, I'm a writer myself. That's what I'm saying. Uh, they're they're going to try to say things to try to connect to you as much as possible, but it's all a scam. Uh, I'll give you one more here, which is maybe even more interesting. Let me just give me a second. I'm going to close this 
barrage of windows I opened. So go back to Google Images. I'll give you one more here, which is maybe even more interesting. Let me just give me a second. I'm going to close this barrage of windows I opened. So go back to Google Images. You do the search by image. I'm going to apply a different photo. Let's go with this one. So this one, again, this is another screenshot I got. And uh, let's just, you, you can enlarge here using the thing. And already you can see that there is one photo here on Instagram. And I'm going to go there, actually. I'm going to check that out. And the code itself, right? I mean, the code itself, you can see that there are other people who wear something very, very similar. Um, you can also click the image source, but I'm not sure. Yeah, this is not too bad. But you see, again, it's from like mostly from TikTok. So I'm going to open a bunch of them and then because sometimes they don't work. So you have to get lucky. But look at that. It's all from TikTok, though. All of it. TikTok again. It's just annoying. And of course, it's the exact same location. It's the exact same angle, et cetera, et cetera. So let's look at this one. OK, so you can compare here. Uh, this is the screenshot I took already. By the way, the face looks different from the, the person I showed you just before. Right. Uh, but again, this this one is completely different. And this one looks fake, too, by the way. Um, I'm sorry, but there's something off here with the lighting. Um, at least here, the lighting is more believable. This one is just horrible, though. This is clearly, clearly fake. Um, okay, let's look at can find ad count. Okay, this one. Okay, so basically, you get the idea. You have to cover your ass as much as possible. Now, of course, the other kind of one way to check is to actually go on a video call with these people. But be careful because there are some of them who are very, very skilled. And uh, for example, if you use the kind of classic things like, hey, can, can, you, can you wave at me or something? Uh, they're very great at editing. So they will, uh, they will play back a video of them, you know, wa of somebody waving anyway. Um, anyway, just be careful because there's a lot of, lot of tricks they can use, okay? Uh, honestly, like, I don't know, but don't be embarrassed to ask as much as possible. Uh, maybe draw a circle or I don't know, like just make them do something. If they just sit there, if you're just looking at them and chatting, they can very easily fake the video part. And then when you ask them to wave or something, they have that that video, you see that video and they just play that. So it looks like when you asked, they're waving, but actually it's all part of the of the trick. So yeah, um, just just looking at them, probably I would say not enough. Make sure that you actually communicate, like use voice, etc. Uh, that would be better. Now, uh, I already searched this before, how to basically reverse image, right? So I already showed you one way with the Google Images. But Google Images is not fantastic. It will give you a rough idea if you're lucky, but it's not like, you know, it's not great. Uh, so there are other ways you can do this. And um, one of them that they recommend it is called, just give me one moment. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce this one, Pim Eyes. Anyway, I'll put a screenshot. But I think this one is not free. So that's, um, yeah, you probably have to register this one, I would imagine. But you can do the same thing. You can upload a photo and it will try to, you know, find the source. So that's definitely one, one thing you can do. All right. So that's the catfishing. Uh, be careful. Now, um, I'm not sure about, like, if, if men do this, th this kind of thing. Probably. I wouldn't be surprised anyway, uh, but I know that definitely like women, it's easier to pose as a woman and then, you know, go from there. Just give me one moment. Yeah, because you can literally use any kind of photo. It can, it can be like a local model or something like that. This one I was talking to, 
first of all, I'm pretty sure this is a guy, okay? Like most of most of that, most of them are guys actually, okay? They're just pretending to be a like a beautiful woman or something, but it's a guy. I asked him um because I got a photo, right? So I asked, okay, do you, do you know where that photo was taken? By the way, the photo also looked like a completely different person, okay? So you really have to be kind of thick to fall for it. But some people do, unfortunately. And that's why I'm making this video today to kind of warn people to not fall for the shit. Anyway, so I asked, uh, where was that photo taken? And uh, she's like, I, I'm not sure, maybe Bali? Come on, come on, seriously? I mean, I mean, I have a bad memory in general, okay? I can't remember many things, but if I look at my old photos, even like from 30 years ago or whatever, even I can say, okay, this was like in Spain and this one was probably Greece, okay, maybe Turkey, but at least I would probably say with very high certainty where that photo was taken, you know, any photo. Uh, so when they say, I'm not sure, yeah, because you got it from the internet and you're just kind of pretending to be that person. So you, you don't know actually anything about that photo. You just stole it from the internet and you're parading as that person. That's what you're doing. You're a scammer. Okay, so that's the catfishing. Huge one these days, uh, especially guys, be careful. Because yeah, they will use some photos which are like just you know, this amazingly beautiful woman. Um, and it could be real. I'm not saying like it's always fake. It could be real. But just check, check, check as much as possible. Just don't, don't fall for it just because it's a beautiful picture, you know? All right. Now, the second big one these days, and just before I even go into it, I will recommend a few people you can check out. Uh, number one is Scammer Revolts. Now you can, uh, it's on YouTube. You can just type it Scammer Revolts. I will put a, a screenshot to the channel here. Uh, check him out. Uh, he's very good at connecting to tech support people. And he basically like wipes out their computers and puts a bunch of crap on their computer. Uh, what that does is that if they try to recover their files, it's it's much more difficult because now new data is on top of it, so the computer can't really deal with it. It's it's a bit hard to explain if you're not a tech person, uh, but basically that's how recovery works. If you just lost your files and you didn't overwrite them, there is a a good chance you might recover most of them. But if you did overwrite them, then it becomes much more difficult to recover. So that's one, Scammer Revolts. The other one is kind of like a super master. He's been on TV already a few times. Um, he was on the BBC, I believe, Panorama. Yeah, BBC Panorama. And uh, Jim Browning. Check him out. Uh, now, he's very different. He, he like exposes the scams. He reports them to the police. Uh, unfortunately, often it doesn't lead anywhere because the problem you see is that even like regular platforms like Facebook and, you know, Twitter, uh, I guess even like Instagram and TikTok, there's a lot of scammers there. But unfortunately, these platforms don't deal with scammers. Now, from time to time, they might like ban a few people here and there if it's absolutely obvious. But most of the time, they will not. So that's why I don't like to use Facebook and Twitter and all, all the other platforms is because, yeah, they don't actually make much effort to protect us. They, they don't care, actually. They care about money. So they have like scammers, you know, giving them money to sponsor some kind of fake ad. Facebook doesn't care about this shit. They only they got their money. So they don't care about that. All of these things you hear about Facebook, it's like, oh, we're going to protect you against Russian bots and all of that. This is just lip service, okay? Trust me, Facebook does not care about you, okay? They don't. They just don't. So um, don't, don't believe in that illusion. They really don't care about you whatsoever. And other companies are the same. 
So yeah, Jim Browning is a good one, great one. Scam Revolves, Jim Browning. And the other one is DVR, check them out. Now that guy actually, it's a, it's a bit more complex to explain what he does, but usually on the live streams, generally he will try to just kind of waste a scammer's time by talking to them. And you know, they always want you to install some kind of software like TeamViewer or AnyDesk. Uh, there are others, uh, but be careful. Like, yeah, when you ask to install some software, remote control software, be very, very careful about that because uh, they will, they have certain ways they can block your input. And uh, while you cannot type anything or move your mouse, they'll do a bunch of shit on your computer and completely screw it up or something. Okay. So yeah. Um, and then they will ask you money to fix it. So, okay, they break your computer and then they ask for money to fix it because it's a scam. And again, uh, once you give them the money, they're not going to fix anything I, because again, it's a scam. It, they're not, you know, they're not actually tech repair guys. They'll fuck up your machine and they'll ask for money. You give them the money and they will just disappear and your machine is still fucked. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, they waste uh, time, uh, scammers money, uh, time. Sometimes they try to hack back also, and they have certain tools, let's say, uh, they can put them on the scammers machine and launch that from the scammers machine. And basically that will kind of encrypt all the files on the, their machine. So that means that all the files become unusable for the scammer. So in a way, that's even better than trying to wipe their drive because when you wipe a drive, they can still like somewhat recover. But if you encrypt every single file and they have no way to decrypt that, I mean, that's it. Like they have to wipe their system. They have to basically delete everything and there's no way to recover. Even if they do recover the files, they will still be encrypted. And they can't decrypt that. So it's very clever, very clever. And of course, in the background, what they do is they call flood the scammers call centers. So uh, this is a, a tool you can get. And basically you, you input a number, a phone number, right? And you basically tell that, that call flutter to call again and again and again and again. It can make like, I don't know, uh, thousands of calls per minute. And what that does is it occupies the scammers phone lines. So it keeps them busy so that actually the, the other call victims that, that can call the number, they can't reach that number. So they can't get scammed then. All right. So now finally I can explain what exactly that type of scam is. Well, usually you see it happens with places like Facebook, let's say uh, you lost access to Facebook, right? So this is very strange to me because usually if I have a problem with Facebook, I go to facebook.com slash help, okay? Uh, but I don't know, for some people, actually, let, let's do this experiment right now. Let, why not? So I'm going to go back to the Google thing. And let's say you have a problem, right? Let's say uh, Facebook uh, got hacked. Um, I need support. Okay. So yeah, the first sources will be like facebook.com. So that's okay. Uh, but for some reason, people don't like that. So they start to scroll down and you know, like you, you're going to end up on YouTube videos for some reason. Like you, you like, I don't know why you would watch that. Um, rankreporter.com. I mean, again, it could be legit. I don't know. But like, why would you go there? It's not facebook.com, right? Uh, marysmith.com, whoever that is. Uh, I saw one yesterday, actually. Uh, Instagram, um, Microsoft, NPR. Why, why the hell would you go to npr.org for advice on Facebook? I'm not sure. Uh, LinkedIn, same thing. It's like, why would you do that? Washington Post. <laughs> All right. 
and I even saw, yes, oh, Quora. Yeah, that's a great one. So yeah, if you want actual real quality help, you should go to Quora. <laughs> Why? And uh, I'm not sure, like yesterday, I also saw like one from, from Reddit. I don't know, I can't find it now. Uh, but the point is, okay, if you have a Facebook problem, why on earth would you go to Quora or Reddit? It just doesn't make any sense. Like, like what are you thinking? And the problem is, like, if you start doing this kind of searching on Google, likely you're going to uh, get to some, you know, fake websites with phone numbers. And the phone numbers go to scam call centers in India. Usually it's in India, not always. Uh, but usually it's like that. So now what I'll try to do is I will try to reenact with my very bad acting. Sorry about that. I'm going to try to reenact an actual call to a scam call center. And I'm going to try to pretend sounding like an Indian, but I'm not good with making voices. So sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, let's let's just see how it goes. So again, I'm pretending to be the scammer, okay? So let's say I get like a, a phone call from, from a victim, potential victim. So first, uh, I would, when I'm not busy as a scammer, I would probably be talking because they're working in cubicles, right? So I would probably be talking to my coworker who is also not busy right now and just talking in Indian, you know, like, Bencho terimakichut. And then, so the phone call comes. Hello, this is... Mark Wilson speaking from Microsoft support. How may I help you today? Okay, so this is like the classical reaction of a scammer. Immediately, you know, the head the headset goes on when they see the call. And, you know, they're Indians, okay? So their real name is like whatever, Suraj or Raju or whatever. Um, it could be a woman as well, doesn't matter. They, they are women scammers as well. You know, it's not one sex. Uh, so yeah, the headset phone so goes on. They will tell you a completely fake name. Okay. This is not like Mark Wilson or whatever. This, this is an Indian dude or an Indian lady, uh, woman, I should say lady should be re refined. And, um, they will pretend to be Microsoft or they will pretend to be Amazon, eBay, you name it. It doesn't matter. Actually, sometimes it's like, <laughs> sometimes you can call the same number twice. And one time they pick up and they will say, hello, this, this is Facebook support. How may I help you? And then the next time you call them, it's the same number, but they will say, hello, this is eBay support. How may I help you? It doesn't matter to them. Uh, it's a scam. So it doesn't matter. Sometimes they have many scams routed to, to the same number, you see? So anyway. After this, what happens is that you start to explain your problem. Okay. So you say, okay, I have like this pop-up on, on my computer. Uh, it's making a lot of noise. Some of them do. And you know, maybe my computer is kind of fro almost frozen. Um, it, the, the message is saying something like, you know, your a computer got blocked. And, uh, if you do something else, your computer will be completely blocked uh, to prevent some further damage to the network or some bullshit like that. Now, if you get this pop-up, by the way, uh, it's fake, okay? It's fake. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I know it's making noise, et cetera, et cetera, but it's fake. Uh, you can just restart your computer and it will be gone probably. Uh, or you can just close the window if you can. But sometimes when you do that, there's another window that opens and sometimes it's a barrage of windows that opens. So that can be very, very annoying. But Maybe if you reboot your computer, you'll be fine. Just just start like a new session so that the windows don't reopen, you know, uh, and you'll be fine. So anyway, don't worry about that. This is not fake. I, I mean, it is fake. Those messages are fake. And anyway, so then what happens is that the scammer will tell you, OK, uh, so now we will uh, try to um, I will try to look uh, for a solution. Please stay on the line, sir. Please stay, stay on the line. OK, so. He's going to block your call for a second. He's going to just take off his headset. He's going to just look at the seating for a few minutes, maybe have a drink or something. He actually is not doing anything during that time. Trust me, he's not. This is just to give the illusion 
that he's working for you. He's trying to find the solution, but he's not. I know this because I've seen videos from ca co scam call centers where it's like that. And after that, after, after a minute or two, you know, he's casually puts back his headset or whatever. And he's going to unblock the call and say, okay, uh, hello. Uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, so I looked at your, uh, your device and sometimes, by the way, <laughs> they didn't even connect to you yet, but they already say, I looked at your device. How? If you didn't connect to me, if I didn't give you my IP number or whatever, how the hell can you see what my activity is, right? Anyway, so they will say this. There is some, some hacking activity on your server, sir. And we need to install some tools to remove the hackers from your system. Oh boy. So that's when they will try to, to have you install any desk or a team viewer. Usually, uh, sometimes it's other software, but it's some kind of remote control software. And again, this is, uh, you know, once they get access to your computer, they can fuck it up and, uh, and that's it. You can kiss your system goodbye. Now, uh, this is like a, mostly a tech support scam, you know, uh, about the pop-up anyway. Uh, but it can be like a fake refund scam. Uh, you know, like you get this email saying it's Norton. Uh, antivirus, uh, $4.99 for a, like a three-year protection plan. It, you didn't even order, uh, but you know, you got charged. So you call the number and you say, okay, I want my money back. And that's usually, that usually degenerates to uh, gift cards eventually. But look, all of that is, is absolutely fake. None of that is real. Norton did not charge you. Uh, Norton did not send you even that email. It, it all, it's all from scammers and they know what they're doing. And mostly they're targeting kind of older people. Look, I mean, I, in my family, like I have an aunt and she's like 70, 78. I, I'm not sure. I'm 77, 78, I guess. Uh, she sometimes has issues with Facebook. And you know, like you can, you can click on forgot your password, but she, she doesn't know really how to deal with that. So anyway, it leads to usually the creation of a new email account and a new Facebook account, because again, you know, not tech savvy person. Now with my mother, my mother is, is younger. Uh, she's like in the kind of late sixties and, uh, you know, recently she had some kind of problem and I wanted her to go into DOS in uh, Windows 10. I, it's not very obvious actually in Windows 10, but anyway, I tried to, you know, you have to go to the C drive, etc. So I told her that you, you need to go to C drive and then Windows folder, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, maybe five minutes later, you know, I thought she's already there, but then five minutes later, I get a message from her saying, um, how do I open the C drive? Oh, Good Lord. And uh, for me, this is very frustrating because, you know, when I was in high school, I took like computer class. I mean, I took actually computer as uh, one of my subjects, final subjects in the high school exam. And like, I was there, I was at home. So why didn't you ask me questions back then about that? Because th these are, I mean, come on, opening the C drive, it's absolutely basic, you know, like it's, it's as basic as flushing the toilet, really. So why the hell didn't you ask me questions back then when I was actually physically there and available? I, it's, it takes a few minutes to explain, like it's not rocket science. I know that like for some old people, the computer seems like unaccessible. It's something that science fiction, I don't understand it. And if somebody can understand it, there must be some, they must be some kind of genius and you know, stuff like that, but it's not, it's not complicated at all. It's not, there are complicated things. Yes. Programming, et cetera, et cetera. But just the basic operation of a machine is not hard. So yeah, I don't know. This is very frustrating to me though, because I was there and you didn't ask me questions. And then, you know, like now we're separated well, halfway across the world. 
and uh, I'm not physically there. And it's very difficult on Skype to explain certain things usually. But yeah, and these type of scammers, you know, they target people like that who don't understand um, technology and they will be scared by these type of pop-ups that, that start to scream on your computer, some kind of beeping noise or whatever, and they go into a panic. And instead of, you know, going to facebook.com slash help, which is, you know, the, the thing that you should do, they start to Google it for some reason, and they end up on Quora or Reddit or some kind of weird ass website with, with you know, these scam numbers, and they end up on the phone, phone line with a scammer. And if they have like Alzheimer's or some kind of mental, uh, you know, mental problem, mental impairment, they'll get scammed 100%, 100%. Okay, look guys, that's all for the video. It was a bit long, uh, but I, I think I gave you a, a very thorough overview of all the scams happening these days and hopefully how to combat them a little bit better. I gave you even, uh, you know, sources to look at uh, if you want to know how uh, anti-scammers work. Uh, do check these guys out. They're amazing. And uh, yeah, if you have some kind of questions, you know, post them in the comments. I will try to get back to you as quickly as possible. Uh, and uh, yeah, just watch out for scammers, man, because we live in an era of scamming. And so they're really everywhere these days. And uh, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. I do hope that you watch the whole thing, really. Uh, because if, you, if people didn't, okay, like if you say, ah, okay, this is just like boring. I don't care. Okay. What I'll say is that in that scenario, if you don't care like that, then you know what? I hope you go ahead and get scammed, man. Because at least you learn, but you learn the hard way. I hope you don't. I hope you did listen to all my video. But in case you don't care about that, you don't want to listen, you, you, whatever, um, then what can I say? You know, I did my job. I tried to warn you. I gave you all the tools needed to prevent all the shit. But you don't care. You don't listen. All right. So go ahead. Get scammed then. Go ahead. What, what else do you want me to say? All right. That's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. And I will see you on the next one. JC signing off. Peace.